be plain out boring uh, because there's a lot of math and calculations going on here. Some of you service providers, you know, you get a little bit of a taste of what these designers go through to get a system designed because it's much more than you think it is. So um, let's get started. I did want to give you a few reminders. Um, Records requests. Those of you who request records, we do try to get them out as soon as possible. But you know, with all these new areas that are requesting records, sometimes it gets, gets very difficult to get them out to you. So we ask that if, if at all possible, try to give us a 24-hour turnaround time. If you could get that in a day before, then hopefully we'll have it to you when you need it. So uh, please remember that our, our Clerks are processing a lot of emails, a lot of faxes for records. You're not the only one who's requesting records out there. Now, I do want to make one other statement. I know that you have been frustrated in the past with some of the records you've received. I, I apologize for that. I have no control over the individuals who pull records and fax them to you. If you feel like this is a new system, or there should have been a record on this. You can call one of us, and we will pull it and get it to you. If you are unhappy or unsatisfied with the service you've received, I'd recommend you call their supervisor. I can't do anything. <laughs> so uh, Stephen Ling is his name. Uh, he's extension 220. So if you feel, and he, he understands this issue, he wants it resolved, and if you guys have concerns about it, please call Steve and he is trying to deal with it. I will help you out in the meantime or one of my staff will help you out in the meantime to make sure you get what you want. Now, just a couple of things to think about. You are certainly also, anytime you do a um, inspection of a system, a couple of things that you may not know that we know, and that is there are neighborhoods out there who have wholesale failure. There are neighbor neighborhoods out there that have <coughs> common tail lines, common dray lines that go to who knows where. We are a lot of times aware of those or aware that it exists. So if you get in an old neighborhood, <clears throat> call us and we'll tell you what we know about it. If you feel like you know, there's something weird going on here, this system is from 1930 and it's working. All right, let me tell you what I know about that area and maybe you can help diagnose what's going on out there. So we, and you may still not find it, but we do know some things about particular areas in the county. We can give you a general categorization of what you may see. <clears throat> so we do want to help you out that way. We all want the best inspection done that we possibly can do. And this is on the property transfer phenomenon. Another thing that I want to update you on is <clears throat> a lot of you, I think last year at this time, roughly, I was making you aware that that WPCLF, the, the Water Pollution Control <laughs> Loan Fund money, money had been given to Stark County and then in the sum of $160,000. As the wheels of government turn slowly, we are finally now at the point where they're going to be putting out for bid. They're not going to mail you a, a bid package. If you're on their list, that's not the way they're operating this time. It is going to, they are looking at it, the county is looking at this, and the state, by their guidance, has said this is a major construction project. You need to follow procedures like you would bid out bridge work or road work, which means you're only going to see this <laughs> in the paper. So when that bid notice goes out, which is going to be very soon, watch the paper for it. I'm going to tell you right now, it's coming out. You will be bidding the whole project, one installer, the whole project, which means anywhere from 13 to 16 septic systems is how they're bidding it. So that's $160,000. So if you are interested, keep your eyes out there, call regional planning, whatever it may take if you're interested in pursuing that. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a fairly large capital outlay for you to be able to do this because the draws are going to be kind of limited, I think, but some of that can be worked out. So please be aware that that's going on. The work will probably be started in October, so it's been over a year since this whole thing has been going on, and finally we're going to see some systems going to ground. There is a pre-bid hearing, August 22nd. So if you're in, interested, regional planning's put on a meeting, and they're gonna go over anything that has to do with the bidding. I'll be there to maybe cover the technical side and the permitting side, but they will cover all the rest of it. <clears throat> I understand there's a $100 non-refundable deposit to become a registered bidder. So be prepared that that may happen. 
I understand also that it's not your normal bond, the $25,000 bond you maintain, that's just with us. They're going to want you bonded for the entire project. Make sure you don't default on the project. And then the draws, you know, the first thing I had heard that there may be two draws on 16 projects, I thought, wow, who can afford to pay that money out and only do it in two draws? It sounds like they're going to work out the draws so that you guys have some flexibility on how you can collect that money uh, for, for each project or for a handful of projects, whatever it may be. I just was in contact with them this week because I did have some concerns about the way it was kind of set up. But it is unique simply because the state is telling us you need to do it as a major construction project like you'd normally do other county projects. Any questions about that? And that's about as much as I know. About about the money, uh, but you know more more news to come. Yeah, all the permits have to be pulled up front at the beginning of the project. Yeah, and plus, my understanding is this too, Carrie. <coughs> they have not obtained EPA permits, right. so the contractor is responsible to get all the permits obtained from EPA, and of course we issue them after that. So it's kind of a messy setup because they want the contractor to do pretty much everything. We did as much as we could. On our, we given you plan, or we did all the plans just to save the money in this whole project. We did as much as we could to try to cut down on any unexpected expenses. We try to tell you if there are plumbing problems. By the way, you're going to need a plumbing permit if there's plumbing problems. So you want to make sure you build that into your bid that if you're going to hire, sub out the plumbing to whoever, that's built into there. Well, it has if, to be done own. by a licensed plumber. I was, I, most I to most things. Yeah. Most things. Yeah. Bob? Yeah, what's, are these all off lots? No, they are not. Okay, what's the percentage? Uh, I think we had two or three on lot systems, something like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll warn you all now, 120 days to complete. They're gonna try to hold you to that time frame. They understand certain things do happen, so they, they're gonna hold it tight, but they do have some plan B if it gets to that point. I would recommend that if you get the job, you plan to do the soil-based systems first because once you get into winter or whatever, you're going to be struggling trying to get those things in. Well, you're going to be two two weeks out just getting EPA for Yeah, exactly. You're so going you to be get your soil-based right one and get them rolling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, any other? Yeah. Are you going to require all the bidders to be registered septic installed? They have to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Now, so these design plans you came up with, are you guys going to do the as built too? No. <laughs> Fit that in there because I'm not doing it. That was a pain in the see that. It's wrong, but it's in our problem, right? That's your problem now. Nice. No, okay. okay. Yeah. So <laughs> there has been some discussion. I maybe this question ought to be asked at this meeting. I, I I asked the question to follow up with your question to regional plan. I said, what if a general comes in here and has ten installers he wants to just sub it out to? Is anything going to stop that from happening? And she wasn't sure about that. I said, well, whoever does the physical work has to be registered. Now, I don't know if the, the general contractor or an installer can bid down to others or sub it out to other installers. I don't know. I don't think they will. Well, you have to be registered with regional planning, and that's a process well, in itself. They are using that list yeah. this time. It's open to any, okay. anybody. So again, because it's a it's a big major construction project, the way we do it. Anyway, this is, you know how it goes. It's, been, it's cumbersome when you have the government involved. Last thing, I thought I'd put it on here, but maybe it's a bit later. I'll mention it now. Stark County just got awarded another $154,000 for next year. So this, this has been a help. As much as a pain in the butt all this stuff is, we do have some people out there that just simply cannot do, do their installation. And we... We normally give them a list. Here's all our people we've got orders on. They say they can't afford it. Go through the process. So we, we got more money coming for next year. Uh, just a reminder also today, we're going to do three CEUs. I mentioned to you December 14th, same time, 8 a.m., we're going to try to cover new code updates. Um, so you might want to mark your calendar for that if you'd like to be in attendance that day. It will be become as much as we can the new code, which, I, like I said, I don't think it's going to be majorly different than what we're doing, but I'm sure there's going to be some subtle changes. All right, mounds. 
I really struggled putting this thing together. I review a lot of plans and I just buzz down through them knowing exactly what I'm looking for. But to explain it to you, I use five different documents I use to look at plans. <clears throat> was was a challenge and hopefully you won't I won't make it that apparent that it was that big of a challenge um, and how to do this but I want to start with why use a mound <clears throat> and if you recall the biggest driving factor for using a mound is simply the depth to the limiting condition right here depth to limiting condition the deeper that is you can go into the ground as a standard trench or maybe you do a shallow trench um, actually, that probably ought to be yeah, on the ground a little bit more right there. We very seldom see at grade systems, but they can be done. And then a mound gets, is, is the next one. As that limiting condition gets shallower, people start coming more and more out of the ground. In order to do, let's say in this scenario right here with a shallow limiting condition, you may choose possibly to put a shallow trench in the ground with an aerator in front of it. So those are, your, those are your choices. What ends up happening though is the higher that leach trench is in the ground, the more dirt you've got to, soil you've got to cover it with. So if you've got an area 150 by, you got four leach lines and they're six foot on centers, you've got a lot of soil now to cover that entire area. So a lot of people, decisions are made for a mound based on how much fill do I got to bring out, number one. And the second one is, does the homeowner, do I want an aerator here? Those are the two driving factors we keep seeing over and over why people choose mounds. The amount of soil I gotta cover the area with if I'm at a shallow or at grade leach line, and do we really want an aerator at this property? And we wanna remember <clears throat> the days of leach wells are long gone. Um, we are really in the days of treatment, and that's probably for, that's a good thing. Um, you know, we used to, in the, in the day, we would just consider, get it in the ground and get rid of it. We didn't worry so much about how well it was treated by the time it reached the water table. And let's remember, we basically are recycling. So what you put in there now ends up in the water table and you're drinking it later. So we want to avoid contamination. So as we put systems into the ground, we're doing, a, we're doing many things. We're getting rid of the BOD and TSS, those are the regular characteristics we test for in wastewater. Uh, those get removed, TSS, total suspended solids, first few inches. VOD maybe less than a foot. Bacteria, maybe two or three feet. And then viruses, it can take much longer to get rid of uh, those contaminants out of wastewater. So when we have a three foot vertical separation distance to the groundwater table, that is to get rid of the bacteria and some of the viruses. Some of them we, we don't, but we got to be practical. Maybe it takes five or six feet, but you, you can't do that on, on most sites. So we're trying to get rid of these things before we reach the groundwater table. And that's why we sometimes, when this condition is shallower up here, that's why we got to bump these things up. We want treatment before it gets there. <clears throat> How many of you guys, just by show of hands, have installed a mound system? All right, so this is going to be foreign language. How many have designed a mound system? A little less. <laughs> okay, so those of you who haven't, uh, just gives you an overview of, of what it looks like. This is the end view of a mound, and typically we have this. This is the native soil interface right here, and right about in this area, we call that the basal area. That is where we're saying that the sewage water is going to migrate through <coughs> the sand. It's going to get go into the native soil interface. This is a uh, plow or uh, cut up or scarified we call it by the backhoe or by a chisel plow right in here to make that interface. We, put, we then put sand in there to compensate for the distance to that, to that limiting condition we didn't have. For, so for example, if the depth of the limiting condition was, let's say 14 inches, you're going to go, and we, our minimum separation distance is 24. You need 10 inches of sand to treat that water before it reaches the native and goes down to the 14 to give you a total of the 24 inches. So that sand is based upon the depth and the limiting condition. 